A lot. For Since really? the last time we talked. What's been up? Everything. Don't tell him yet. Hey man, welcome back. <laughs> Black Market is open. Black Market is open. We're having a sale on everything black over here. <laughs> Except for the people. We ain't for sale. Hey man, welcome back. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Hey, man, 85 South Show presents the Black Market, and today we got my man, Mr. Justin Dawkins, in here with us today. <laughs> Give us a brief rundown of, of what it is that you actually do. Because I got my notes, and I'll make sure you say what's on this paper. Notes. I wonder where you got those notes from. Uh, I, I know people. You know people? Uh, so I do a few things. Uh, my full time, what I spend most of my time on is fundamentally helping black businesses. That's my job. Man, that's it right there. <laughs> I'll clap for that. I will clap for that. I'm rooting for everybody black that's and it. the blackest. That's it. Uh, so the majority of my time I spend a firm called Collab Capital that I founded with uh, two of my really good friends, Jewel Burke Solomon and, and Barry Givens. You ain't bring them. I ain't bring them. Uh, Jewel just had a baby, uh, okay. a, a, literally a week old. So. Happy Jesus. birthday to the baby. Uh, <laughs> and, and my partner, Barry, he's, he's dealing with some, um, some business things that keep him pretty occupied right now. But okay. we'll be back. We'll be back. But uh, yeah, we, we celebrated last year. We raised just over $50 million. Oh, to, my goodness. To invest in black innovators exclusively. Like, specific. like 85 South Shift? Maybe. We talking, I'm talking to your people. You know, oh. the people that gave, gave you the paper, I'm talking to them. Yeah. <laughs> gave you the notes, so. We won't we'll need the whole 50. We'll take a few of them, you know? That's what we talking about. It's cool. We're yeah. going to flip ours, though. We're going to pay y'all back right up front. <laughs> That's what I heard. Just let me hold That's her. That's Let me hold them. Yeah, so um, no one really knows, but we think we're one of the largest to ever raise a fund specifically for black innovators, black entrepreneurs, and so. Even if you ain't, I'm still going to you here talking to me. They didn't come. So right there, you are already my favorite. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Keep doing that, though, man. That's dope as hell. Yeah, so we raised fund one, and the, the goal is to build an amazing portfolio of entrepreneurs and innovators building amazing things, and then we'll go raise another fund that'll be bigger and better. And 500 million. Why? Why is that a secret? We need people to know it early. Okay. I, I like that target. I like that goal. That one sounds good to me. Hell yeah. 10x everything. 500 million. Let's do it. Shit, we can start a black tech company, and then we can get a couple oil You have rigs. a black tech company. Yeah. Look at all this technology around you. What you mean? I like your perspective. Yeah. How did you get involved in the tech world? Oof. So, you want to take me, you got to age me right now. But uh, I, I taught myself how to code in high school. I was bored, and... I was intrigued by, like, I wanted to know how do computers work. And so uh, I ended up just teaching myself, you know. Right. And then when in college, I was tired of being broke, you know, like most folks, uh, most young people in college. You want to have a little pocket money to go around with your, with your refund check. So I, uh, I started building websites and mm. other things on, online for organizations on campus and around school. I went to Georgia State, so right around the corner from here. And uh, I... From there, I just, I love helping people. I love helping businesses, especially small businesses that didn't have big budgets. Because back then, websites, you, you couldn't just go to Squarespace. You couldn't just go to these different sites and just press buttons. Go daddy. Yeah, you couldn't just press buttons to build websites. You had to know how to code. And so I love working with small businesses and organizations that didn't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to build a website. What you can do now for $10 a month, $20 a month, you couldn't do before. So to, to have that had that be an option for them was something that I enjoyed. So I built my first business doing that. And that's you how I got You did a great job too. telling this story because we still don't know how old you are. And you said that was going to age you. <laughs> you're good at this. Well, at least I at least gave a little bit because I said you have to know how to code to build a website. And now you don't. So, oh, so at least. Coding a dying art? 
No, it's just becoming more accessible, and there's there's a lot of like tools What's the trick out there. to that shit? The trick to what? Coding. Uh, like any habit, routine, like discipline, just being committed. It's like any other language, right? That's why they call it programming languages, coding languages. It's just like any language, you gotta practice. You just gotta immerse yourself in it. So a lot of people try to like read a book, you know, or take a course online. I always say try to start with imagining something you want to build. It can be something as simple as, I want to build a calculator. I want to learn how to b write code to build my own calculator, something simple. Or, you know, I want to build an application to save up to buy tickets to the 85 South, whatever it is, just so actually have a real problem that, Im that will immerse you in, in the technology and kind of encourage you along the way, keep you motivated so that you build up that muscle that, you, that makes you want to go and learn how to, you know, chip away at it. And it's just a, it's just a practice thing. Practice makes perfect. So it just takes time. Mm. That's the trick. Ain't no real tricks to it. What are some of the, you know, upstart businesses that you have worked with? Oh, man. Uh, so we have a growing portfolio. Uh, well, another thing that I do is I'm a grow with Google digital coach. So I, over the last... Hold up. You said that fast. Say it. Slow say it down. Slow, slow it down. So you are what now? Grow with Google. So grow with Google. Digital coach. Okay. That's a long so, title. So Grow with Google is an organization uh, that sits within Google. So, you know, Google does a lot of things. They own YouTube. They have the search engine. They have Google ads, a lot of different products and services, Google Docs, stuff like that. Uh, so I help small businesses learn how to use those tools to help them build and scale their businesses. And so that's, that's how I work with smaller companies. And I've done that work for about five years now and thousands of businesses here in Atlanta um, and Georgia. And so that's, I've enjoyed that work. And then as far as like larger like tech companies, tech oriented innovation companies, I'm really, really excited about uh, our very first in investment, which is a company called Hairbrella. I don't know if you know about Hairbrella. Hairbrella? You sound familiar? Tracy Pickett uh, founded that company a few years ago. It was a rain cap. She reinvented the rain hat for, for women. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that story went crazy. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, so she, that, I'm always excited about that business. That was our first investment out of the firm. Uh, we just invested in another company called Varuna. And Varuna does uh, smart water systems. So you know your water at the tap, that water travels a long way right. before it gets to, to our homes. And it's not a very intelligent system. So what happened in Flint is you have all these different waterways and pathways water travels from treatment to your, to your home. Well, those things, those systems were built over years, different materials, they, they wear down different ways. And so what happens is the water gets contaminated along the way, but there's no real way to, to know that until somebody gets sick or something they do, they, they periodically test. So what Varuna does is they have these, these boxes. They're about, a, about the size of, of this stand right here and they feed water into it. It has all these sensors on the inside and all that data that's being generated as water flows through it, it goes to a software application so that people can see in real time where the water gets bad. So their whole vision is to make sure that Flint never happens again. So they want to make all our water systems smart. And so all that data goes into the cloud and then people can respond accordingly. Oh, there's uh, certain metals showing up or certain things happening in the water. So somebody can intervene, stop it before somebody gets sick. So um, uh, Shay and his, his partner built that business out of passion and just wanted, wanted to have people, people to have clean water. So I love that business and, and it's exciting stuff. So that's dope as hell, bro. Yeah. I can't believe you raised all that money. <laughs> and then like to see the type, you know, just to hear where you, you know, where y'all at with it and what y'all investing in is really dope. Especially to see, you know, black people getting involved in, in all of these different avenues and shit like that. We bro. have to. You know, the technology is advancing and we're at a, a, a really interesting time in history, you know what I mean, yeah. where technology is involved in everything now. You can't, you can't really navigate this world and not have something tech enabled, some access point to the internet. You know, the internet unlocks a whole bunch of opportunity. Right. You know, just, just being able to go and click and download. And they said a lot of stuff wasn't gonna be, able, you weren't gonna be able to do, do things on the internet. Nobody ever buy anything on the internet. Now you buy everything on the internet, everything. So what you think of the metaverse and where it's going? Uh, I think Web3, which includes the metaverse, you know, um, the decentralized web, which is, um, it's an interesting space. I think it, it, it's here to stay. Um, 
But just like anything that's early, we're still trying to figure it out. You know, like how people are going to use it. You know, how how do we get it out of the early adopter phase, right? Where you have you know a group of people who are really into it early. How do we get it into the mainstream, and how will people interact with it and use it? You know, the everyday person. You right. Because what the one thing that people don't talk about is, you know, in order to participate in the metaverse, you got to have access to the internet. But there's still so many millions of people, particularly black people, <clears throat> who live in neighborhoods and communities that still don't have access to broadband internet. So how can a young boy or girl in certain parts of Michigan, you know, outside of Detroit, who still don't have access to broadband internet, how are they going to participate in the metaverse, right? If they don't have access to the internet. So we, we have a lot of problems to solve. Where racism but affects everything, man. It does. It does. And so we gotta we we have to the reason that we raised our fund is, you know, we, we want to bridge the capital, the, the wealth gap. And because what we believe is when we invest in amazing entrepreneurs and creatives and empower them, when they have money, they're gonna go back to their neighborhoods. You know, they're gonna go back to invest in those communities, they're gonna start schools, they're gonna use their capital and their access, you know, to influence policy for their people. You know, this country, whether you love it or hate it, was built on capitalism. You know, you, it's hard to get anything done without access to the right relationships and access to money. It's just how it goes. Right. So. You won't hit spitting game, G. <laughs> That's what I'm here to do. That's why I'm here. Give me your outlook on the cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency. Uh, I think crypto is fascinating honestly like really really interesting i think that there are still some things to learn it's still early um but i like the idea of decentralizing some of this stuff you know like this this aggregation you know having money being managed by single entities and um not really having other tools and vehicles for people to do commerce right like right. i like the idea of crypto in a sense, but I, but it's also technology, so it, it can be smarter. And I think I don't think we've really maximized the potential of crypto, right? I think we've done it. We kind of used the the, most, the simplest, basic version of crypto so far. But when you start looking at things like Ethereum and smart contracts, right, like being able to like buy property, you know, and being able to do, you know, have smart transactions. So, you know, one day we all gonna, you know, we all gonna pass on. We are gonna transition. Wouldn't it be great to be able to have technology that when that event happens and it's verified your your assets and your resources and all those things were distributed without intervention you don't need a lawyer you don't need a bunch of courtroom systems what if it happened automatically hell yeah that'd be hard right plug my daddy's hard drive up i got it right here <laughs> exactly right here he left me everything he left me right here he left the car watch the left video me, he left the car the land all that so <laughs> i think there's i think we're headed in that direction you know especially when i think about the speed in which things are happening now too yeah. before it used to take like if you wanted to buy a house you know this like you want to buy a house even with if it's cash it takes time right you want to you offer up uh, a property, you know, let's call it, keep the number simple, $100,000. Even if I wanted to buy a cash, you got to, it's a process. You, you gotta, still got to go through the same process like you got a loan. Right. So what, what crypto and the blockchain, what allows to do is we can have these transactions much faster. Whereas it's, this piece of property is tokenized, right? Put on the blockchain. And then there's this, this shared ledger, because that's what the blockchain is, the shared record. And we all agree that when I give you this hundred thousand dollars in Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever the the token, the, the you know Litecoin, whatever it is, it now belongs to me. Right. We don't need lawyers. We don't need we don't need the government in some ways to do these things. We still need them for other resources and access to other services. But being able to conduct business, I think I think there's a, a, a big promise there that uh, we have yet to see. But I'm looking forward to it. Have you got involved with the NFTs at all? I bought a few. I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm a technologist, so I'm curious. I'm right. just curious just like everybody else. And, you getting and any one. returns? I haven't flipped one yet. I'm okay. holding right now. I'm just, I bought a few, holding on to them. Um, just want to understand, I did it purely out of curiosity, just to see, like, if I could flip it, right? Like, if someone would come along and offer me more money for it and what the price would be. Um, so I haven't flipped one yet. I keep posting. But 
I think it's interesting, and, and what's really cool about NFTs is right now is is you know what I what I'm calling you know <laughs> I call it JPEG money, right? It's like it's in the the most basic form again, like crypto. It's like this is like phase one, where we're just kind of spending money to buy images, but it doesn't have to be images. It could be rights to music. It could be, um, or if it is an image, like for instance, you got images back here, you know your Ghetto Legends you know gear. What if what if I could own a piece of that and rebrand and every time it prints a t-shirt and I sell that t-shirt, two pennies goes to a college fund, right? These are the, this is what I mean by smart money. So NFTs is, is the idea of it is on the basic level makes sense, but I think there's, again, there's more potential than power. We just haven't unlocked it yet, but I'm excited about that. And I think, you know, I think our people are the ones that are going to come up with the creative ideas on, on how to actually use this to, you know, in a way to, to benefit our community and obviously benefit our pockets. So. Hey, man, when the black people nerds hear this and they're going to want to get in touch with you, how can they do it? Because <laughs> um, you know I'm connected with the nerd gang, too. Hey, I love them all. Um, I ain't calling you one. I'm just saying the type of information I'm, I'm, that I, you have, they're going to be interested in getting some more with it. I'm like, did you even know that we could? I, I know them. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I do this all the time. Shout out to my black nerds out there worldwide, my scientists and Shout people out to working the blurs, NASA and shit like them. that. Uh, the blurs. Uh, That's what they call black nerds. I've just been calling them black nerds. That works too. Um, <laughs> so my personal is J Dawkins ATL on Instagram and Twitter. I don't, I'm not really anywhere else, um, so I'm not really on Facebook. Um, or, or you TikTok. probably on some other shit though. What you on? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really not. 4chan or some shit. I, I wish I had. That's hilarious. I wish I had the time to to get into some of this. I just don't have time, so I don't. What are you What are you doing all this with all this time, bro? Man, I was while I was waiting. I was literally sending emails and closing deals. We closed on another investment earlier today. While you were here. Wait, don't clap! Don't clap! He ain't cut me in. Cancel that shit. Don't be doing business on my it. premises, bro. We still gangsters over here. The cost of doing business. That's funny. I want seven percent. You doing business in my establishment? I had it. I bro, the Godfather would cut your fucking <laughs> black ass ears off, man. They gonna kill you. That's you funny. tried me that time. That's funny. You tried me. You just trying to see if I, I was still on my got own my street Wi-Fi, man. Credit, man. I, I had my own hotspot. You had your own Wi-Fi. My own hotspot. It's yeah. my land. Oh man, you're right. I'm sorry. Send me an invoice. Man, you saying shots? I don't give a damn if it's a bomba clot nickel bag. <laughs> Three of them dollars is mine. Three of them dollars is What'd you say, Kat? Uh, so I want to ask you a quick question about uh, NFTs and explain it to our viewers real quick. What are? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, NFTs, if, for those that don't know, is uh, non-fungible tokens, uh, NFT. And basically what it, it, it does is um, it allows you to tokenize things. And so I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Uh, right now, we're seeing this movement in art, right? So it's like whether it's a graphic, maybe a, a sound, uh, you know, music even can be an NFT. And what is built into it is called a smart contract. And that's what, that's what makes, uh, makes it different than like, paper money. Like, the thing about paper money, it does not leave a paper trail, right? It, it's, if I ain't lost a dollar right now, that dollar is gone for all intents and purposes. But with an NFT, what it, allows, what it, what it does is it, it creates almost like a string. And that string, is, if, is, is, it, it can, you can instruct it to do certain things. So with an NFT, I can say, hey, if you know, Nas has even talked about 